Okay, so welcome everyone. Uh, we all know that uh, networks are the best way to uh, display biological knowledge and we know that proteins play a key uh, role in these networks and they are not independent, rather they interact with other molecules in our network or pathways. And we have seen that uh, already in previous two sessions uh, with pool down experiment you can uh, create the protein protein interaction networks and then in phosphor uh, in ptm section we saw that you can find which kinase or which uh, proteins are up regulating or down regulating the uh, reactions so in this uh, session actually the whole network uh, tutorial is divided into three practicals so let's go to your usb stick And in assignments, you can see there are three uh, network assignments, uh, P5, P6, P7. In P5, we study uh, how to upload a uh, protein-protein interaction network to Perseus and how you can use it for signal functionality score calculation. And then P6, where you can do co-expression analysis using a powerful tool from R, which is known as uh, WGCNA and in P7 there is phospho, uh, uh, phospho analysis again using PSP uh, uh, so protein kinase study. Uh, so I don't think so we will be able to finish all three of them but we will start with P5 and let's see how far we can go and rest you can do as a homework and it's very well explained so I think you will be able to go through each step. Now main thing is to you, to go through this tutorial you need uh, in Python and R in your laptops. So how can you uh, confirm that uh, Perseus and Python is working? I just uh, load a random matrix and then go to external tab and click matrix to Python And then this button, is select button is green. Uh, this means that your laptop has recognized the path of Python. If it does not, you can just browse the, your Python executables. So you click and try to find your Python here. And you can do the same with R. And if, if your laptop path is set, uh, path is set for R, then you can find it all automatically here. Otherwise, you can browse the R executables. And if you don't understand uh, how to do it, then you can go to the tutorial. Uh, and here you can find that there is a nice description given how to install Python and use it in Perseus. So all the uh, frequently asked questions are also answered here, how you can set the uh, path in your environment variables. So it's very nicely described, but still if you don't understand, feel free to ask us. And now I hope that it's there in your laptops. And if it's not there, then you can just follow me uh, through each step. Okay, so let's start with Perseus, uh, and I will remove this. Let's load the data set for this tutorial. So Go to your USB sticks, data, practical 5, and then let's first upload this phospho STOI data set. So this is a SILAC data set uh, with MCF uh, cells measured in duplicates. And then everything is selected automatically, so let's just click OK. And then we need to later on map this with a protein-protein interaction network. So let's annotate them. So go to add annotation, 
you already have homo sapiens from uh, previous uh, tutorials and then let's choose ensemble protein or is it for everyone is it ensemble protein or ENSP okay so I choose ensemble protein and then I get this ensemble protein IDs I'm not kidding. Okay, I know why. Because I have to choose Uniprot and then Okay, now I have ensemble IDs here for the proteins. And this is just to map with the network database. So we know there are very uh, popular network databases available like String uh, and uh, uh, PSP for kinase substrate. And they, these databases are available, or BioGrid, these databases are available as tab separated and you can use it for your analysis. So in this uh, tutorial, we will use a string database. So we have already downloaded string database here for Homo sapiens. And let's take this one. So for this, we have to go to raw uploads and not the uh, matrix upload. So I go to raw upload, select, and then select the string database and this is not tab separated but space separated so I split the columns into space and then I click OK. It will take some time so because it's a huge data set database it contains all the protein protein IDs. Uh, yeah so until this is loading, do you have a question? Oh, it's there. So, wait, because it's a very huge one. And you see it's like 11, 11 oh, million something. So what you can see here is protein Perfection. one, yeah? This is just a general question. Um, I notice you, when you save the session, we can get all the steps. Yeah. Um, I was wondering if we could get the save sessions for the PTMs and uh, with the more complicated steps like your session too. If you could like upload it somewhere, we, we can download it or email to us. Then we can sort of have a more um, follow you along when we get home. <laughs> yeah, can we do that here again? So, yeah, I think we will try to provide you all the sessions. Yeah, this time we didn't put any session on USB because it was huge, so we will do it. Okay, so now here you can see the protein one and the protein two. So protein one is the protein first protein and the protein twos, two are the proteins which are interacting with this protein. So you see 23, 233 is the first one and then these are the all interactors of this protein. And the combined score gives the confidence how, how confidently it's interacting with each other. So uh, what, we, and because this was a raw upload, Perseus didn't know what type of uh, data it is, so everything is text, so everything is T. Now what we want to do is change the column type. So you go to, you go to your matrix and then go to rearrange and then change column type. And because all the columns were text, we take combined score and change into numerical because the, we want this 
numbers to be used as our confidence score. Okay, now you see the combined score is numerical. So what can we do now is, uh, is filter rows based on numerical column and we want a score more than 900. Okay, so we, we want mostly the scores which are very confident and not so le uh, least confident ones. I should not have clicked it because it's a huge table. Okay, so let's go to filter rows based on numerical main column and then I take more than 900. Okay, and then so now we can plot a histogram and see the distribution, how it is, and you can select combined score and plot the histogram. You can convert into log scale and see. So these all are the confident ones and the scores, score is more than 900. So we can say that they are more strongly interacting. So now you can also do this histogram for the whole database, but I will not do it because it's too huge and it will take a lot of time. So now you see that these data, this confidence score is in number thousands. So let's convert them into zero to one. So go back again to rearrange, no transform and x divided by 1000. Okay. So now uh, we should also do is that because this combined score is, okay, it didn't do it, sorry. Go to basic transform. and take this combined score to the left. Okay, now it's from zero to one. Uh, and now next thing is to uh, rename this as uh, confidence because that's what it says and not the combined score, it doesn't mean anything. So for us, so what we will do is Go back to rearrange, rename columns, and I want to rename combined score to confidence. Okay. Now this score gives my confidence. You can save this uh, matrix now so that you can use it later because these are the more confident interactors of your protein. So what will I do now is Rename, uh, reprocess this name because this uh, ensemble IDs are now with the prefix of 9606, the taxonomy ID. But you saw late, earlier the ensemble IDs was only starting with the NSP. So I will remove this 9606. And you can do this by going to processing, rearrange, and then process text columns. And now, you can use regular expression for this and and then everything in bracket will be chosen and you have to choose this okay so now it will be easier to map with your uh, experimental data set now what we can do is uh, convert this into a network and view it as network. So 
In Perseus, we have now given the network as tabular form. So you will see two tables, nodes and edges. Let's first go. So you see a tab next to ba uh, ba matrix tab. This is network where you can uh, convert your matrix, uh, tab separate in matrix into network form. And also you can go back from network to matrix. So if you have any other networks, you can easily upload it here and then go back to matrix, which is also there in practical seven, but let's go through from matrix to network first. And now, so we have this uh, matrix 12, and then I will go to, uh, from, mat go to from matrix, basic, and then from matrix. And my source column is protein one, and my target column is protein two. So the source would be the protein one, and the so target would be how many proteins it is interacting with. So then I click OK. And now let's look into this. So this is a network collection uh, activity generated here in light green. And when you click this, there is matrix. And there you find two tables, nodes and edges. So nodes is like, so imagine network is a, a, a circle node here and then uh, nodes, nodes, and then edges will be the connection between this. So this is nodes, how many proteins you have, and edges is what are the, pro uh, the proteins and its connections. And the, uh, the width of the edges will be defined by this confidence. Okay. So next what we can do, uh, also there is graph tab here, where you can see how many nodes and edges you have. So you can see that edges are more because all the proteins are connected to other proteins. So do you understand edges? Or, yeah? So it's just the connection between two, two uh, proteins and how strongly it is connected to. And then what can we do now is uh, calculate, it, calculate node, node, node degree. So node degree is how many num uh, neighboring nodes you have. So go to network, network collection and then go to topology and then node degrees. And you see for each protein, how many uh, nodes, neighboring nodes are there. So this is in degree. And you can see there are many proteins with many uh, nodes node degree, so maybe uh, we don't need so many uh, proteins with so many uh, node uh, degrees because there are proteins which tend to interact with other proteins and we don't need them. So we need some which are very specific to in interacting to specific proteins. So what we will do is, uh, okay, so according to tutorial, first visualize it uh, in histogram. So you can, what you can do is convert this again to a matrix. So you can go to matrix. So here is the tab to matrix, basic and to matrix. And you select this nodes table. And now this is a, a matrix, a Perseus matrix. So you can perform all the visualization steps here uh, with this one. So you can plot histogram here and take the degrees. And then you can see all the degrees your proteins have. So now what you can do is uh,
So I take this uh, network collection and then I have to, uh, let's read it. So, uh, so don't remember. So we did this and now what we want to do is uh, map ENSP back to Uniprot identifiers and so we go to uh, matrix processing and then to base identifiers. So here because everything is in ENSP so now we want this Uniprot ID here so what you will do is go to annotation rows and columns and go to base identifier and then you choose node and in identifier take ensemble protein and click OK. So now you have Uniprot accession I number here. So it's easier to know now your protein because ensemble IDs are very difficult to read. So with protein identifiers maybe you can recognize one of your proteins of interest. And then you can do the same. Uh, you can also add annotations to these. So add annotation. And now you can choose uh, rename. Okay, I got the gene name. And if you want, you can also go and get the other pathways information. And and also in our new annotation files, we have provided uniprot functions and tissue specificity and subcellular loca location. So these are uh, another cool things we have added in our annotation files. So check it. So now added annotations. And there is a problem. OK. So I go add annotation, always take Uniprot accession. And then click OK. So you get your gene names. And it's easier to map with gene names and ensemble uh, and protein IDs uh, to your experimental data. So that's why we need these in addition to your ensemble ID. So now what can we do next is uh, perform photon analysis. So this is uh, a tool uh, created by one of our PhD students in Cox Lab. Uh, so it, it, what it does is, uh, it, uh, so it tries to find out the functionality, signaling functionality score and uh, which protein can phosphorylate another protein. So uh, it, it can happen that not all the exp uh, proteins which you found in your experiment can phosphorylate, but you can also try to find the proteins associated with the proteins you found in your experiment can be involved in the phosphorylation step. So uh, what you can do now is Okay. Okay, so also one more step you can do is go to filter rows and uh, and you can choose the degree of uh, less than thousand. 
Is it less than 1000? Okay, so now you have uh, proteins which are not interacting with everything, but the proteins which are specifically interacting with some of the other proteins. So for from 4 to 1000 nodes. So uh, you can also save this as your uh, a smaller data set for your string database. So these are the most confident one and also uh, have less uh, interacting nodes with it. So now we can use a photon. So take the network we have here and then go to network tab and then go to modification and click photon uh, okay so first we have to merge your your experimental data so this one was the good one yes so i will take the experimental data with uh, phosphor sdy and then i will merge with the network so Select your network and then control select your experimental data. And then go to merge with matrix, annotate, and I annotate edge nodes. So from column uh, one, uh, from table one would be nodes because we want to match those. And from our experimental uh, table, we will take Uniprod. And then we will take all the main columns. And then I will keep the combined copied main values as separate. And then, okay. Okay, so now we have this new network collection, which also have as a Okay, this usually doesn't happen. So let me go back again to networks and the matrix. I know why. Because I have to take ensemble protein and not uniprot. So our network has ensembles, that's why. And then I choose all the main columns again and keep the combined copied main column separate and click OK. OK, let's check now. Yes, now we have all the information from our experimental table. And then now what you can do is take the photon tool to get your signaling score. So the confidence column would be confidence and then I will, so, then, uh, so also in photon there is number of uh, permutations then done for FDR calculation. So uh, for this tutorial purpose let's just make it 100 because 1000 will take a lot of time and then I click OK. So now it's doing the permutations for FDR calculation, so it will take some time. And then let's see what will be the next step. Okay, so Let's see if it's done. I should have taken 10. 
Security taking all of time. But then, any question until now? So I already have a session saved because we are yeah, always prepared for something like this if it takes time. So, so after the photon there will be a matrix generated where you will have all your main columns from your experiment and the nodes and you will see also the significant value. So between the stimulus and the wild type. And then using this matrix, what you can do is convert them to base identifier so that you convert it uh, back to Uniprot ID because now it was network, so it has ensemble ID, so you have to convert it again to Uniprot, so same step. Take this node, uh, take this matrix, go to annotation column, to base identifier, select node because it's in nodes and then the identifier type would be ensemble protein and then you click OK. And then you can add annotation so that you have all the uh, annotations for your data set. So here we just added gene name. And then you can do the hierarchical clustering. So here we cluster these proteins. So now you can see that you have, so in the beginning you had your phosphodata, which was site level. So it was the peptides and not the protein level. So it was problematic to uh, analyze which signaling event happening at which site in which protein. So to derive the functional functionality of those phosphocyte was a bit difficult. But now because we have mapped it to network, so the functional information we can get about the uh, proteins and which site is uh, uh, helping in upregulation or downregulation or activating or deactivating. So this is now at protein level and not at peptide level, but the data set we have was at peptide level. So that was more site specific. And, and imagine these proteins are from the protein databases. So all the proteins associated with your protein present in your experiment. So these are all the proteins present in the database. Yeah. And so what you can do with the networks, uh, you can, uh, in network collection also, you can go to base identifier. So in network tab, also you can go to annotation columns and go to base identifier. So you can click this and you can choose your node and then take the gene, the gene names, ensemble. Okay. And then you can add annotation to your networks too. So you go to add annotation, choose node, and add gene name. And then you can filter uh, your neighbor. So let's find neighbor. Good that we have the session because we have to find this 
particular protein, which is So it's always difficult to uh, judge which uh, protein is your ensemble uh, ID. So it's good to see the protein name. So from here, you can choose your protein of interest. We randomly choose this uh, protein here. For this purpose, this 318, 318 which I knew what was it, but okay. So we choose that and then filter for neighbors. What it will do, it will try to find the neighbor of your chosen protein. And then you can create the uh, network so let's see so uh, when you choose your protein of interest and then you find out its neighbor and then you can uh, create the kinase substrate, substrate network so Go to visualization and then node column will be node. I do this. No. Okay. And then I have this network visualization and we can try to find our protein. So these pink ones are like, have high functionality score and these nodes are can also be in, uh, involved in the phosphorylation event and and also they are the most interactors of our protein so i cannot find my protein here But then you can export this uh, networks to. Oh, I so I see it's here. We try to find the neighbors of this protein. Okay. How much time do we have? Okay. So. This is what you can do using the protein-protein interaction database and your own phosphocyte table. And then you can also do a, a co-expression data analysis, which is, uh, which is uh, given to you in practical six. And then you can do phosphocyte plus analysis, which is given in your uh, practical seven for kinase substrate networks. But the basic thing is you have this network tab now where you can do all the network analysis and you can switch back from uh, matrix to networks very easily. And these, uh, these tabs are there for uh, helping you to uh, switch from matrix to uh, networks. And visualization is for the visualization of the networks. So with this, I would like to take questions.